This is the Beauty and the Geek Australian Mansion, where some of the country's geekiest guys and hottest women are about to come together in a fascinating social experiment. I am the guy who has never had a girlfriend before in my whole life. I've never really understood women. So, what do you know about fashion? My favourite feature would be my smile. I could be a little persuasive at times, a little the eyelash flicker. <laughs> They're people from completely different worlds. Worlds that are about to collide. They make you look very smartistic. Smartistic. Oh, I love that word. Can geeks be transformed into social success stories? I'm now beginning to regret not using all that high school gym equipment. And can beauties learn there's more to life than looks? What is the capital of China? Singapore. Do you know where India is on the map? Is that it there? Huh? Can people poles apart? <laughs> grow together? Fly, geek, fly! <laughs> and change forever. These boys are the nicest boys you will ever, ever meet. There's $100,000 up for grabs for the greatest transformation. <laughs> But the biggest prize is something money can't buy. Thomas has the very sweetest heart. It'd be really nice if I could get to know you a little bit better. My strengths are your weaknesses and your weaknesses are my strengths. Sometimes opposites really do attract. See the surprises as we bring together the beauty and the geek. My name's Tim. I don't understand women. It's like a dog chasing a car. He catches it one day and... What now? <laughs> one of the general mottos for the Scouts is to be prepared and to do your best. And I think that that's great advice for not only dating, but for life itself. I collect stamps, coins and rocks. I've got a small collection of rocks. I've never been kissed, never had a girlfriend, never had a date. Not through a lack of trying, I must say. My ideal girl would hopefully be able to have a fairly strong opinion about whether, even with the kryptonite ring, Batman would be able to beat Superman in a fight. Picture, if you will, a vast, lifeless desert and uh, then tumbleweed slowly rolling. That's basically my love life. What I know about women, you can write on the lid of an Eppendorf tube. It's a very small tube. I make bad, terrible, terrible jokes. I wish you were sine squared x and I was cos squared x, so together we could be one. Oh. Hello, gentlemen. Hi, Bernard. When Bernard walked out, all I could see was his suit, and I was thinking, is that real velour? You're about to be matched up with a beauty who will help you overcome your social setbacks and maximise your potential. Step through that door and remember, first impressions last. So prepare to make a grand entrance. Welcome to the Beauty and the Geek Mansion. The tensions were very, very high. We're all very nervous. Lots of sweaty palms. Um, lots of brushing them against our pants. <laughs> My name's Kara, I'm 20. I don't think girls should use their looks to get what they want. Actually, no, take that back, I do. I'm the best person at making animal noises. <laughs> and um, a dolphin. <laughs> if I paid more attention and didn't focus on my phone and lip gloss, I probably could have got further. My school teacher wrote that on a report card. <laughs> I hate mannequins and I hate pimples and I hate ghost trains because I don't like to be touched by people with masks. The most amount of guys I've ever dated at once would probably be around four. Yeah, one for every day of the week. My last boyfriend said I was one in a million, but he was only half right. 
Hi, I'm Brooke. I'm Ellie's twin sister, but shh, don't, don't tell, tell anyone. anyone. I'd say my hero is Pam Anderson, but there's a difference between me and her, and mine are real. <laughs> Beauty is on the inside, so I think it's more important to be a beautiful person. Sort of brains and stuff you can learn later on. Ladies. Betty's good looking. <laughs> Welcome to the Beauty and the Geek Mansion, your home for the next few weeks. <laughs> You're about to embark on a journey of self-discovery which will alter the course of your lives. So, prepare to meet your geeks. I was so excited. I was just like, game on, <laughs> bring it. <laughs> we walk around the backyard and we see this conveyor belt. Oh my gosh, what's gonna happen? <laughs> I just thought we were trying to find our luggage. Hello, ladies. Hi. Hello. This is where you will meet your geeks. I'm imagining a geek is going to be like Google or like web search. You just type something into them and they tell you information. <laughs> Each geek will make his grand entrance on this huge conveyor belt one by one. Oh my God. <laughs> if you like what you see, hold your paddle up. <laughs> if you're the only beauty with dibs on a particular geek, congratulations, he's yours. You can go back inside the mansion and select a room. However, if more than one of you pick the same geek, then the geek gets to decide. Are you ready to meet your geeks? Well, I think I'm going to go first, just break the ice and get it out of the way. So, please. Good luck. Okay. Thank you. So, I was on the conveyor belt. I just realised, oh boy, this is it. There is no turning back now. Ladies, this is David. I saw the Scouts outfit and I was like, okay, guy in a uniform, it's good. It may be Scouts, but okay, this guy's got some potential here. Hello, Superman. <laughs> scouts, I heard people do it, but I didn't think still. <laughs> As you may have guessed from the uniform, I'm a Scout, technically a Rover Scout, and I've got some ropes here that I can teach you guys how to use. He had me at Scout, and then when I saw the little rope, I was like, definitely. <laughs> how do you think he's doing out there? Well, he's still out there. We were wondering if he was going to come back, and we couldn't tell if it was actually a long time or we were just trapped in some horrible time dilation field from massive gravitational effects. So, ladies. He's beautiful. Any takers? <laughs> I've got him. It looks like Lynette is the only beauty to choose David. <laughs> David, meet Lynette, your beauty. <laughs> I think he's got a beauty. Hey, I think he has I think a beauty. He's got one. Hello. Hey. Well, David came back in, and behind him was just this stunning girl. This is Lynette. Hey guys. Hi, Lynette. I don't think many of us have been that close to a woman of that caliber without some kind of self-defense product sprayed in our face. Okay. Oh, we got first dibs on bedroom, so we were running out, and I was telling him, run, run, run everywhere. This one looks good. I pretty much was so excited. I was just like, hi, my name is Lydia. I'm 20 years old. I'm from Perth. Up next is Tim. Oh, my <laughs> He had longer hair than me. Longer, more beautiful hair than me. Hair. Yeah, I love it. There was a lot of flesh in front of me. That was probably one of the most nerve-wracking parts. I'm an astrophysicist. I'm currently writing my dissertation on pulsar polarimetry and... Uh, I have no idea what he said. <laughs> but while pulsars are the most amazing things I've ever seen, none of them appear to be uh, as brightly shining as you are. So. <laughs> Paddle up. This is my gate. Oh, no! An astrophysicist seems to be a popular choice amongst the beauties. <laughs> we have Cara and Jessie both vying for your attention. Two green paddles, right off the bat. That's really cool. Who do you choose? Uh, I choose Kara. Congratulations, Kara. <laughs> first unwanted one. <laughs> Definitely got to get rid of this gooey. That will happen. Thank you. Guys, this is Kara. 
Hi. Hi. The first thing I noticed about Kara's beauty was her smile. Yes. She smiled at me as she walked past. I just absolutely melted. Our next player to the conveyor is Thomas. <laughs> oh, shit. He's a devoted Hawaiian shirt collector who's never been kissed. Oh, yeah, I think all the girls are like, oh, and also like, oh. Good afternoon, ladies. My main geeky interests are science fiction, particular Star Wars, Marvel Comics and political science. One of my particular interests is also dance, one of which, yes, is hip-hop. <laughs> And then he kicked the stand and I was like, oh, it's all over now. We were out in the garden waiting for the geeks to come out on the conveyor belt. And when I saw Thomas, I was like, okay. He looked really nervous. And I was like, okay, what's with the t-shirt? <laughs> and then he broke out some of these mad moves. Right. Oh, oh. 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 Wow. Oh. He was getting so into it, he was hitting the conveyor belt and stuff. I was a little bit frightened at times. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow, that's impressive. When I finished my hip-hop number, the paddles were all up, thankfully. So, Thomas, that looks like a tough choice to me. Tamika, Jesse, or Eleni May? I think I'm going to have to go with Tamika. When I hopped on the conveyor about, he was like kind of holding my hand, but also I think he didn't know if he should be holding my hand or not, so he was like really nervous just to hold my hand. Oh, not again, not again, not again. Wonderful. Yeah. If Tamika were uh, a ship, I would say that she would be very well cantilevered and ballasted. She certainly wouldn't capsize. When I was able to see her close up for the first time, I really couldn't quite decide whether to look at her eyes or look at the beautiful flower in her hair. You also hot, you'd make the devil sweat. <sighs> Thankfully, I think I chose the eyes as the predominant feature to look at, because she does have great eyes. Ladies, our next geek is Marlon. My hobbies are listening to operetta, especially Gilbert and Sullivan. So I commenced with a melody I shamefully plagiarised from the Barber of Seville. My name is Marlon. That's right, it's Marlon. So don't forget or you will be exchanging some quick pleasantry. So come on now, you maidens fair, the time has come to do and dare. Let us rendezvous on yonder stair with Marlon. That's me! Marlon. Any takers? Now I'm just like, oh, the paddle's up and can't take it down now. Next up is Michael. <laughs> Michael has a Bachelor of Electrical Computer Engineering. Bachelor of Electrical Engineering. Maybe you could fix my hairdryer. I have a hobby that I like to do magic tricks. So I think if you choose me to be your geek, we could have a lot of fun and maybe a few sparks might fly. <laughs> I don't want to burn my hair. Any takers? I guess maybe my magic trick set Jesse's heart on fire. Up next is Daniel. <laughs> I was so ridiculously nervous, I couldn't look at them, and so I decided to hold up my molecular model and uh, look at it. This molecule is called glucose, or uh, sugar, and I chose sugar because sugar is sweet just like all of you. <laughs> to get three ticks of approval was incredibly gratifying. Who do you choose? You're all very incredibly lovely. However, I really like Donald. Other people were competing for him as well, made me feel like I was pretty proud to have him. We're roommates. <laughs> I was really surprised when I saw Daniel coming into the room with a beauty in tow. And I thought, well, we'll be roomies. That's awesome. Are we sharing beds? Is it girls and boys? Like, is it girls in one bed? And... The boys were so cute and uncomfortable about the whole thing. Uh, I can sleep on the couch if you like. I'm in with Eleni May and the boys are in the same bed together. So we're going to be good roomies or we're going to be the best of roomies. Ladies, up next is Stuart. There was Nicola and Ellie left in the backyard. Any takers? Nicola put the paddle up, so a team was born. Ellie, 
Our final geek is George. So I waited till the end to pick my geek. <laughs> so picky. <laughs> I looked over to all the empty chairs except for one, and it just glowed. Oh, get out there! There you go. I just decided to do my introduction anyway. This is a hand claw <laughs> replica okay. of a creature known as Australovenator wintonensis. So, Ellie, do you like what you see in George? <laughs> I end up with George as my geek. Yeah, I hope he can't tell us apart. Do you think he'll be able to? Oh, I don't think so. So after we all chose our bedrooms, we all got called down to the lounge room and I was like, what's next? <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. wow. Tiara and blank paper? Wow. Seeing the tiara on the pillow, I immediately thought of royalty. I thought maybe we were doing something with medieval royalty. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Beauties and geeks. The game starts now. But this year, we've shaken things up a little. Uh -huh. And there are some big surprises in store. Oh, I love surprises. Challenge one should make the beauties feel right at home. It's a beauty pageant, ladies. <laughs> With you on centre stage. And gentlemen, you must embrace your inner fashionista and style your beauties for success. Well, I believe a fashionista is uh, a totalitarian government based upon uh, strong economic policy. Oh, wait, no, sorry, that's fascism. Then, geeks, from the high-flying world of fashion to some very real flying, we're about to test your beauty's understanding of aeronautical engineering. Aero what? Aeronautical? Aero... Aero... Aeronautical dynamics? I just don't see the need for this big, long word. Why can't they just call it building planes or something? Bernard built a paper plane and we thought, oh, I'm sure building a paper plane can't be that hard. So, that's it. Please do try and get some sleep tonight. And I will see you all tomorrow as our first challenge commences. The crucial Sunday Sailor's Toast is to fair winds and following seas. I think it's going to be weird having this huge mansion that I'll call my home along with 15 other people. It's going to be a lot of fun. After consuming our drinks, we decided to invigorate ourselves by a dip in the spa. There we go. We're having a bit of a chat, and the next thing we know, the beauties have started to come out of the house. We've warmed it up here. How lovely. Now, no party business, thank you. They're all sitting there with their hairy chests and dude. Wow. Rocked. They were just like, oh my god. <laughs> um. I think Stuart might have been a bit nervous, which come across really cute. George is kind of the good looking one. I looked over at Marlon and I could tell we were thinking the exact same thing. This would never happen to me in real life. When we arrived at the Beauty Pageant Challenge, all I can see are scraps of material, a couple of mannequins with things draping over them. All of my confidence has just gone. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hi. 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 Geeks, you've put your mind to many a mathematical problem, but can you make a woman look like a million dollars and take the crown in a beauty pageant? Beauty pageant? All I've seen is movies where hot girls ask for world peace and wear sashes. That's about all I know. <laughs> you must act as your beauty stylist. Oh my god. You must make a bikini that best represents you. Oh no, 
I don't even think I could make myself a bikini. I'm like, what is this going to look like? Using your imagination and a pair of scissors. <laughs> I've never had to dress a woman or even had to think about dressing women. If I go clothes shopping with friends, I'll wait outside. Beauties, we're looking for best in show. You were judged on style, poise, grace and communication. You will strut your stuff on the catwalk, modelling in the bikini, before answering a series of questions from our pageant judging panel. Three former Miss Australias. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> so embarrassing. Scissors at the ready. You have 90 minutes. Your time starts now. Okay. There was no time to even whisper, not this colour and not this style and this size. I had to just go. Oh dear. Oh dear. When I opened the box and saw what I had to build a bikini out of, I was feeling that Tamika would either burst into tears when she first saw it, or she would make it a personal goal to kill me. No way. <laughs> These are not bikini materials. Vernon said it was going to reflect who you were, so I thought, you know, maybe there'd be some engineering, designy fabric. Boy, was I wrong. <laughs> you are a geek. Okay, that's cool. A couple of Spider-Man masks, a couple of arc reactors, some comic books. Maybe I'll just keep the comics, but anyway. Maybe not. All sorts of molecule kits and cotton buds and blotting paper. Lab coat material. Perfect, perfect. We can make her into a science geek. There's this whole bunch of scout stuff, like ropes and ferns. That's at least going to provide some covering. <laughs> it does the exact opposite of what it's meant to do. What is this? It's perfectly wasted Hawaiian shirt, that's what it is. Uh, okay. There was also a pair of plain brown bikini bottoms. However, I thought it wasn't very flattering and decided to cover it up with long division flashcards. <laughs> I hope she likes division. <laughs> I hope that the astronomical community can forgive me for the terrible inaccuracies I'm about to portray. May not win any prizes, but she'll be able to fire repulsive blasts at her enemies, and that's almost as good. I decided to cut up the fur, make a, a chest. What's that? A bra? A chest bra? It's gonna have the tightest reef knot I've ever seen. Reef knot, grain knot, clove hitch, square lashing, diagonal lashing, sheep shank, truckies hitch. I may know how to tie 15 types of knots, but when it comes to making a bikini, all that stuff just goes straight out the window. <laughs> Sit roughly around there. MacGyver could not have done a better job himself. I think I'm enjoying this way too much. I'm just trying to decide whether this will cover her or not. She's a G-cup, and apparently you need a lot of material to cover a G-cup. There you go. As the time ticked down and ran out, I was just devastated. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Miss Beauty and the Geek 2010. The geeks have got into tuxedos. We've sat down in amongst the audience and none of us feel confident. Please welcome our celebrity judges, Miss Universe Australia 2009, Rachel Finch. Rachel Finch, she's so beautiful. Rachel who? Oh my God. I'm backstage. No. About to walk out in front of Miss Universe. Oh my God, that's a top. Miss World 1972, Belinda Green. <laughs> he is terrible. Oh my God. Do I have to wear them too? And Miss Australia 1954, Bliss Ryan. 1954? Were bikinis even invented at that time? I heard a scream backstage and my first thought was, Yes, that's to make us see my swimsuit for the first time. Oh my gosh. Thomas, Thomas, Thomas. And now, ladies and gentlemen, make her feel very welcome to the stage, Tamika. Oh please, oh please, let this hold together. Don't let it completely collapse on the stage. That was the only look I was going for. I looked like the Little Mermaid and Malibu Barbie. When Tamika came out in a swimsuit, I became exceedingly hot under the collar. It was so uncomfortable. I was like, oh, 
Oh, these seashells hurt so much. What's your geek, dude? Well, my geek, Thomas, he loves Hawaiian T-shirts. So he's like, if I'm wearing Hawaiian T-shirts, I'm going to make my beauty Hawaiian. So, <laughs> hey, guys. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Jesse. The bikini. <laughs> my goodness. She had to wear another top underneath. I felt like I'd really failed in the measurement department and completely underestimated the job at hand. What does your bikini say about your geek? My bikini says that my geek likes numbers a lot because he's an electrical engineer. He also likes computers because I've got USBs um, on my bikini. <laughs> Is this the baby top? When I actually saw the bikinis, I was like, oh my god. And that's when I started to freak out. I think I broke out into a sweat and was like, I'm not wearing that. Please welcome our next beachy beauty, Nicola. Nicola. There is no way I'm wearing that. Please welcome our next beachy beauty, Nicola. I was wearing the most hideous thing I have ever seen. Before I went on stage, I was like... <sighs> I think the proudest moment was when she started up the arc reactor at the end of the catwalk. You could power an entire suit of armour with it. I have a dad out there. I don't want my dad to see me in, like, a light-up bikini. Can you turn around? Have you got eyes in the back of your bum? <laughs> they are. Goodness me. I'm just not quite sure what that little thing is on your... Neither am I. <laughs> he loves comics, so I believe I am the new girl from Spider-Man. And what would your superpower be, do you think? Right now, it would be to be invisible. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our next Baywatch beauty, Ellen e. May. I'm walking out in front of three, like, famous people and then a crowd I don't know, like... It was an unmitigated disaster. Looking at her face, you couldn't tell that she absolutely loathed it. We were actually trying to work out what your geek does, can you tell us? Uh, he's studying criminal law, it seems. <laughs> I think there would be a lot of men in the audience right now that may be a little disappointed with your bikini top. <laughs> Please welcome Tara. Tara came out onto the catwalk and some of my fears were alleviated. She'd actually managed to make this thing look halfway decent. In fact, I'd go so far as to say it looked really good on her. Can you tell everyone a little bit about your swimsuit and what it represents? My swimsuit, obviously you can see it's covered in stars because my wonderful partner is an astrophysicist. And what do you know about astronomy? Um, not a lot really. Ladies and gentlemen, please make her feel welcome to the stage, Donna. The only one thing that was going through my mind was that Donna was going to kill me. We had some balloonage happening and one deflated. I don't even know what he was thinking. While Donna was walking down the catwalk, she blew a kiss to all of the geeks and they all turned to me and said that she looked the best out of all the beauties. You popped a balloon. <laughs> I don't think those glasses will give you much UV protection. No, but they will save me from the elements. And what are they cotton buns? I don't know, he's going to teach me the correct term, but atoms and elements... And no, you look wonderful. Very colourful, and I think that it's very creative. Please welcome our next beauty to the stage, Lynette. I love the Porsche, except it's starting to get a little bit itchy. I do love the costume. I think it's great because unlike the others, it's a little bit more modest, a little bit more back to nature. Back to the bush. Yeah, back to the bush, exactly. <laughs> Tell us about your geek. <laughs> he's 19 and he's been in the Scouts 18 years. Oh, fantastic. 
Well, I'm, I'm sure I was interested in the Scouts, but I don't think we'd be able to start at the age of one. I mean, there's, there's some other fundamental stuff that needs to be done first. 13. 13! Oh, don't wait, he's 19. Oh, my bad. <laughs> Please welcome our next bathing beauty, Ellie. Yeah, okay. stressing out. Okay. We decided to do a swap. So I did the bikini part instead of Ellie, just to see if anyone would notice. I was actually very impressed. Very impressed. Yes, you were very well. Tell us, what does your geek do? Uh, he's a specialist in all dinosaurs and digging for fossils and all that. Do you know what that profession is called? Um, and... Hello, 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 Paleontologist. <laughs> paleontologist. Paleontologist. Close, close. Almost. <laughs> Does this outfit say anything more about your geek, do you think? I think he wants me to be his cave woman, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, she was right. And, uh... Ladies and gentlemen, one more time for our beauties and our geeks. Well, your first challenge is behind you. Congratulations. You are judged on style, poise, grace, and communication. The judges' scores are in, and it gives me great pleasure to announce the winner of Miss Beauty and the Geek 2010 is... Donna and Daniel. Oh my god, very exciting. I, I couldn't believe it. So surreal, so amazing. I was so happy. I felt so much relief. I felt like Donna was proud of me. Donna and Daniel, congratulations. As the winners of this week's challenge, you are now safe from elimination and have the power to nominate another couple to send through to the elimination room. It was so a combined effort. It was Dan's creation, me pulling it off. Beauties and geeks, before you head back to the mansion, I have one more thing I need to tell you. Beauties and geeks, I have one more thing I need to tell you. George, your beauty, Ellie, has a secret. I was thinking, hey, what's going on here? Ellie is not quite the woman you thought she was. What? What does he mean? We were all so confused. In fact, she's twice the woman you thought she was. <gasps> I was like, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, Ellie's a guy. Oh my god. <gasps> I shared a bed with her last night. <laughs> Does she have like five degrees? She's a geek as well. Please welcome Brooke. Bang! What? <laughs> they were exactly alike. And I was still looking at both and going, okay, which one's which? Which one's which? So, George, double trouble. Not only have you been paired up with Ellie, but her twin sister, Brooke. However, the twins can only compete as one beauty. Only one twin can compete in a challenge, and only that twin can study for that challenge. Beauties and geeks, head back to the mansion, get some rest, and I'll see you all tomorrow for the next challenge. Definitely a big surprise to, yeah. to meet you both. <laughs> yeah. We'll have to redo every conversation we've already had. <laughs> I'm not sure if the other geeks are jealous that I've got two twins at the moment, but see what happens.
Yeah. And we've got a jacuzzi outside. I'll be terrified of getting in there with you. Why? I'll just, it'll freak me out. Well, you can see my bikinis, cos I do bikini modelling, and that's, that's something I take a lot of pride in. I know, and that is probably the part I would imagine that would freak me out. Thomas is so sweet. Maybe a bit overly sweet, but I think he's still a bit shy around me. Have you had many girlfriends? None. None? You've yes. never had a girlfriend before? Yes, I know. Are you serious? Do you think that there will be any romance in the house? What do you think about Cara? Cara's pretty fantastic. She's amazing. She's very attractive. I must admit, though, I, I do have a tiny crush. <laughs> I think a lot of the guys in the house do. Really? Yeah. Do you like her? I think she's fantastic, yeah. I felt like there was a bit of a connection between Kara and myself. I feel like I couldn't have found a, a better beauty in the universe. How are things with you and Jess? Yeah, going pretty well, I think. Where's the central balance? Oh, what's your hand? <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> Soon as we met up, she started asking me who I was, wanting to know all about me and, you know, just... I was really nervous until then, but, you know, she just started to make me feel comfortable. Oh, excellent. You get the crunchy bum cheeks together. That's easy. Up. I do that anyway. And then go up again. How do you feel about Tamika? Oh, she's fantastic. Feel my leg. Really? See how I'm sitting? You stay there. Put your leg on there. Yeah? Okay, and I'm sit down in your arm. She's, above all, a very fundamentally kind and caring person. It's nice, it's a good curvature. She's always talking. She never shuts up, which is it's something that I actually do love. Because yeah. it completely compensates for my painful shyness at times. Spread your legs. No, not that one. You reckon she can teach you to come out of your shell? She can give it a darn good shot. She's in for an uphill battle, but she's the woman who could do it. I think I love her. I'm just trying to check my pulse rate. I want my heartbeat like 200. <laughs> it's all right, Tom. <laughs> Calm down. Have you ever wondered how airplanes manage to stay up in the air, even though they're so many times heavier than air? Yes. I don't know why. I just, I thought about it, but then yeah. I... Yeah. Did you have any ideas? No. I was like, gravity, maybe? How things stay up? Waking up first morning uh, in the mansion, Eleanor May and I decided to get straight into hitting the books uh, in preparation for the challenge, the flight and aeronautics challenge. Do you know, understand what gravity is? I mean, clearly you know what it is, yeah. right? Does it matter? <laughs> it does when you're trying to fly. OK, OK. <laughs> Tamika, what do you know about flying to start with? Aeroplane's pretty much just like a big bird, isn't it? You Not know? quite. Well, kind of. You know, with a bird, they flap. Yes. And the aeroplane, if you, if you really think about it this way, when it takes off, it flaps a bit. Do you know those little air things that come up? Do you know what acceleration is? Um, well, I wasn't in the accelerator class at school. <laughs> <laughs> I think she might have picked up her study habits from where she left off in primary school. <laughs> As we arrived to Darling Harbour, there was a massive stage in front of us. And I saw Bernard standing on this massive podium and I was like, this is going to be fun. <laughs> Welcome, beauties and geeks, to Darling Harbour! <laughs> <laughs> Everyone was trying to work out what was going on. It was just this high platform. There was water, there's a big podium. I was freaking out a little bit right about now. Beauties and geeks, welcome to a very special challenge that will see you soar to new heights. The first ever Beauty and the Geek Birdman Rally. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, beauties, I hope you've been studying up on aeronautical engineering. You will have one hour to design a glider for your geek to fly. Once you've finished constructing your craft, your geek will take a leap of faith off this six metre platform. The geek that flies the furthest wins. I would never normally 
jump off a diving board that was that high. I have one hour to build an aircraft to fly. Are you, like, really? Are you serious? Could even a professional person do that? Thomas is doomed, like seriously. Beauties, the blueprints for your craft are in these sealed containers. It's a lucky dip. It's a boys job, buildings for boys. The only thing I know about flying is there's a big engine and a propeller and wings. They have a big part in it. Where are all the objects? That goes in, that goes in. I ended up getting this like super-sized paper plane that I had to assemble and I had no idea how to do it. How am I meant to fold these out? Oh my God. I had no idea what my blueprint was, so I opened it up and it was called Wiley Coyote and it was an Acme rocket. Oh God. Mary Poppins, yay! It had five umbrellas. No one even flies on a kite. Like, is this thing secure? Is he going to be okay or is he going to crash and die? You don't get this right, then you'll, you'll come crashing down. Okay, they're in two sections. Oh dear. Oh, so. oh dear. <laughs> in the lab, I usually give instructions to other people and we give the instructions and they do it. Just the one that's pointing towards me. Yep, that one there. I'm hearing you. Yeah, no, that's fine. You're the one building it. Cover top ring with foil sheet. Just get in the hole. <laughs> yeah, all right, kid. This will help me with my challenge as well. Get it underneath. Oh, yeah, that's... It's like putting the bed sheets on. Like, you know when you do your bed sheets? My mum makes my bed. Dan gets a little bit stressed. Oh, when you, you know, you fold your clothes? Uh, it's kind of like that, but you're folding it around I don't fold my clothes either. Donna is a little bit of a princess. Marlon, Wait, you're other, a genius. Other tab. other tab, quick, quick, quick. Having taken a good look at some of the other competitors' planes, I thought that ours was the most aerodynamic. As an engineer, I knew that these weren't going to be very successful flying machines. <laughs> Thomas, I was just so, oh my gosh, my gig is so cute. I had a look around at the other costumes and next to me was George in a giant chicken suit. <laughs> I thought, maybe this could be worse. <laughs>jump time and like any good flying saucer pilot I of course had to be an alien. So how far is the drop? Uh, six metres. What kind of superhero or sci-fi characters are you? Well you know kind of got the whole silver surfer vibe going ch trying to channel the power cosmic. Well prepare to hit light speed. Are you ready? I am. In five. Four. As soon as Bernard hit the countdown, pretty much the entire world dropped away. Three. One does not simply run off the end of a six metre drop without the possibility of shock and damage. Two, one, fly, geek, fly! <laughs> go, 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 go. Oh! <laughs> Charging down the runway, I just had to focus on the flying saucer and trust it. Running on air, running on air. and then I feel like a stone. I didn't pull off a perfect reverse inward dive. It was more of a face plant slash chest plant slash mashed potato being dropped off the edge of a building. I hung in the air, much in the way bricks don't. We who are about to fly salute you. Okay, so David and Lynette, how are you feeling? A bit nervous. You have yeah. jumped off things, up high things though. Yeah, rock climbing, abseiling. So I'm, I'm used to working with heights. It's a sudden stop at the end that would be the problem. Are you ready? Yeah. Yep. David, are you ready? I'm going, are you kidding me? Of course I'm not ready. Potentially, I could just be holding on to a bar of Velcro. Oh boy, what have I gotten myself into? David! <laughs> All right, on my count, in five, four, Oh dear, this is not going to end well. <laughs> fly, geek, fly! Go, go, go! I'm not going to let go of this thing come hell or high water. <laughs> go, go! Go, go, go! Go, go! Oh, 
<laughs> he fell like splat. <laughs> I couldn't help but laugh. Like we were all laughing because it was just the most funniest thing I've ever seen. Oh, oh God, is he all right? Just completely winded. Oh, that smarts. <laughs> I broke the water back first. Oh. I laughed a lot when David went into the water, then I immediately felt extremely guilty for laughing at him. I thought, oh God, I'm a sadist now. You're great, Dave. I find it just completely astounding that I survived a six meter drop into Darling Harbour on the back of a paper plane made out of nothing of cardboard and Velcro. <laughs> took the plunge of lake, got winded, but at the end he did really well. So we use our powerful coyote legs to propel this thing. All of a sudden, Kara busts out this amazing application of Newton's second law to explain how our craft is actually going to work. I'm going to use my tail yeah, to as a make propeller. me faster. Yeah, I'm going to be like, and then go shoo. So we get ready to ride this rocket to the moon. Tim, are you ready? Let's do it. All right, starting ignition sequence. Benny had to light the rocket on fire. I was actually hoping that would give it enough spark and push so I didn't have to push it. Fly, geek, fly! Go, 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 go. We went racing down the runway. The water is coming towards my face so quickly. <laughs> Face smack into the water. Ow. My world is a world of pain. <laughs> Came back up and I thought, we didn't go anywhere. <laughs> we just dropped. <laughs> I have the feeling that Tamika might have chosen my outfit for me. I must say, I did like the hot pink. It felt good, it felt slimming, it felt right. Given that you are the star aeronautical engineer of this equipment, are there any strategies you could give me? Well, um, just run fast, and I know that we kind of have a bit of advantage to other people because we've got a little repeller. That yes. kind of works like a helicopter. So unfortunately, a propeller on a hat does not make you fly any better. Are you ready? Oh, yes, I am. All right. I had like two thoughts in my head and I didn't know what was going to happen. I had like my, wow, maybe this could work and like, oh, no, he's going to crash and die. In five, four, three, two. I feel a little bit like Amelia Earhart right now. One, fly, go geek, go go fly! Go go I started to take off and I quickly realised just how much a kite really does handle like a shopping trolley. The moment had come, it was time to take the plunge. I was freaking out. On my call, in five, four, three, two, one, fly, geek, fly! Picked up the machine and ran for it. The whole time I was thinking, just jump when you get to the edge, just jump when you get to the edge. I was going through the air and I was like, this is amazing. I couldn't believe how much fun I had. Jessie told me I'd have fun, and she was right. Oh, jeez, that's Ooh. a long way down. Are you scared? Um, Are you scared of heights? A little bit. <laughs> a little, little tiny bit. Oh, excrement, I am about to die. Marlon, Eleanor May, are you ready? Yes. Woo. In five, four, three, two, one. Fly, geek, fly! As I jumped off and my feet left the tarmac, there was just dead drop. I can now cross off, jump into the Darling Harbour dressed in spandex and wielding a biplane off my list of things to do before I die. All right, so Daniel and Donna, how are you feeling? 
penguin. <laughs> I'm nervous. The idea passed through my head that I'd be strapping myself to a flying machine that Donna built and jumping off a six metre ledge into Darling Harbour it frightens me. Three, two, one, fly, geek, fly! As I took the final step off the runway, I panicked and I let go of the box cut. A little bit. Just run really fast so we can like go really far. Launching off this platform would be like jumping off the back of a Giganogosaurus, which is a massive carnivorous dinosaur. What kind of distance do you think you might get today? I reckon I'll go pretty good. I'll try and fly like a pterosaur. Or sink like a chicken. Yeah, or sink like a chicken. Either or. <laughs> Chickens fly. Do they? Are you ready? Yes, mate. Yeah. On my call in five, four, three, two, one, fly, geek, fly! As I was running down the ramp, all I was thinking was, jump in the air, jump in the air. As I cruised down, it just felt awesome. <laughs> She's going like this! Yeah, you're flapping down. I had to look cute while I was doing it. <laughs> <laughs> After the challenge had finished, everyone felt incredibly accomplished. All the geeks were incredibly proud of their beauties and all the beauties were very proud of themselves. Beauties and geeks, congratulations on a true test of courage and a magnificent show of aeronautical skill. You all did exceptionally well. <laughs> now to our two top flying geeks. George. Michael. And your beauties, please step forward. Can you get through? One geek flew a distance of 7.6 metres. So far. The other geek flew a distance of 8.5 metres. Wow. Jesse and I, we were, we were so nervous in anticipation. And the winner of the Beauty and the Geek Birdman Challenge with a distance of 8.5 metres is... George and Ellie. Oh, my God! <laughs> <laughs> I was just shocked and surprised. Not stoked. No, I, I didn't think I, uh, we did so well. George deserves the win after being able to wear that chicken suit. <laughs> Although I'm a little bit jealous. I've always wanted to wear a giant animal costume. <laughs> well, congratulations, George and the twins. You guys are now safe from elimination and have the power to nominate one other couple to send through to the elimination room. I'm glad that Brooke, Ellie and I won the challenge, but not looking forward to nominating another couple. But remember, with great power, comes great responsibility. So choose wisely. <laughs> so we've survived our first like challenge in our first week, so no elim eliminations for us. At least we know we're going to be here for one more week. <laughs> Congratulations, guys. Here are your prizes. Being a geek, cleaning up dinosaur bones, to jumping off a platform in Darling Harbour, Massive change and probably one of the greatest experiences of my life. As much as you win, the challenge is all exciting and you're so happy that you won. It's not nice to have to think that someone has to go now and it's going to be our decision. Tensions were running high. Nobody wanted to be picked. Nobody wanted anybody else to be picked. I feel like I just got here and the next thing you know, someone's going to go home and I really didn't want it to be me. It was very painful having this burden on you and walk down the stairs and confront everyone.
Hello, everyone. Hey, Ben. Hey, ben. Welcome to the very first nomination ceremony. Tonight, one couple will be eliminated from the competition and will be leaving the Beauty and the Geek Mansion. Daniel and Donna, you dazzled us in the beauty pageant. Congratulations. Thank you. And George and Ellie, you won the Birdman Rally with flying colours. Well done. But that leaves you in the unenviable position of nominating one couple each to send through to the elimination room. Everybody needs to be here. It wasn't fair that we had to be standing there making this decision. That I didn't feel comfortable with, with my decision. Daniel and Donna, who do you nominate to send through to elimination? Like, this has been the hardest decision ever. <laughs> This is a decision we must make. And so it is with great regret uh, that we nominate Marlon and Eleni May. Marlon's a really confident guy already, and Eleni May is smarter than she looks. Felt terrible. Felt like I'd been picked last for the team. I didn't think I'd be up. Not because I was confident, I didn't think Donna would put me up. So we're gonna be good roomies, or we're gonna be the best of roomies. But that's okay. I know she feels really bad. I can't, like, I know I can see how much, like, Donna in particular is hurting, because we are good friends, so. Do you think if you were in their shoes, you would have chosen them? No. No, I wouldn't, but it doesn't matter. I still love you. George and the twins. Who do you nominate to send through to the elimination room? Well, Bernard, this is probably one of the hardest decisions we have to do in this game. I'm, I'm not enjoying this at the moment. Um, so the couple we've decided to nominate is Stuart and Nicola. Sorry. It's okay. It's okay, George. It actually really hurt inside. Really hurt inside. Yeah, it's so I honestly thought that it was going to be me up for elimination. Shock more than anything that I wasn't nominated. Stuart, how do you feel about that decision? I guess it had to be someone, so. Marlon, Alan May, Stuart, and Nicola. For the beauties, it's time to apply everything you've learnt about the miracle of flight and geeks. A thing of beauty is a joy forever. It's also the topic of your quiz. So gather your thoughts, say your goodbyes, and I'll see the four of you in the elimination room. You don't realise this is a competition, and then this happens and it sort of just hits. I think Donna's decision to nominate Eleni May just proves that even if you are friends with somebody, no one's safe. And now I just have to learn 3,000 years of fashion. What's a boob tube? A uh, tube, a uh, strip of material that covers your boobs. We've just gotten started, so it's really difficult to even ponder going home at this point. And what law of physics is that? That is the Newton's third law. I think in the quiz uh, we've got a good chance. We both seem to know our stuff. As to whether we'll, we'll win, I, I don't really know. It's really difficult to even ponder going home at this point. Haven't even really settled in yet. I would say I'm strongly opposed to going home tonight. I think it would... It would be a real punch in the crotch. Marlon and Eleni May. Stuart and Nicola. Welcome to the elimination room. You will each be asked a series of questions. The team that answers the most questions correctly will win. The losing team must leave the mansion and the competition immediately. Beauties, it's ladies first. Gentlemen if you could retire to the viewing room to watch your partners.
beauties. You will each receive two questions on the subject of flight. Eleni May, you'll be going first. Please choose a card. Three, please. The force that opposes the forward motion of the plane is called what? Oh, come on, come on. You know this. Propulsion. The correct answer is drag. No. So, Nicola, please choose a card. Um, number one. Tom Cruise's character, Maverick, was the lead role in which 1986 hit movie? Um, Top Gear. Nicola. Tom Cruise's character, Maverick, was the lead role in which 1986 hit movie? Um, Top Gear. Oh, close. that was close. The correct answer is Top Gun. Oh, that's what I meant. <laughs> Eleni May. Two, please. In the United States of America, what is the presidential aircraft known as? Um. I can't answer it. I'm sorry. I'll oh, give it a go. The answer is Air Force One. Embarrassing. Nicola, here's your final question. Which famous Australian cricketer reportedly drank more than 50 cans of beer on a flight from Australia to London? Scene one. <laughs> Correct answer is David Boone. So, from two questions each, you both have zero points. Gentlemen, if you'd like to join me in the elimination room. So it's down to you. As neither of your beauties scored any points, you both will start on zero. You will each be asked two questions on the subject of beauty. Marlon, please choose a number. I think I'll pick number four, Ben. Come on. It's a picture question. Who is this beauty? And what shoe did she help make famous? Oh my, oh my God. God, he has no idea. I believe that is Pamela Anderson, and she helped make the mule famous. <laughs> Isn't that a donkey? It is Pamela Anderson. However, it was the Ugg boot ah. that she helped to make famous. Stuart, <laughs> your first number, please. Uh, number one, please. What does the anagram VPL stand for? Uh, that would be visible panty line. What the <laughs> Whoa, he got that right? He's probably seen my panty line the whole time I'm here. Visible panty line is correct. Well done. Thank you. I feel bad I didn't teach him that. He must have just seen my visible panty line all the time. <laughs> Marlon, your final number, please. I'll take number two, Bernard. Which of these is not a type of shoe? Jelly, cake, boat, or tap? Tap is a shoe. Tap dancing shoe. I believe the answer is cake. But... Cake is a soap. The correct answer is cake. Well done. Thank you. So, gentlemen, both tied on one point with one question to come for you, Stuart. How are 
Christian Louboutin shoes immediately recognisable. And the soles red. The clasp. The correct answer is by their red soles. Scores a level on one point apiece, which means we move into a tie-break round. You will both receive a question. The geek who comes closest to the answer will win. How many celebrities did Madonna mention as a salute to beauty in her song, Vogue? I have absolutely no idea, Bernard. I would hazard a guess at 30. And Stuart? I also have no idea, but I'm going to go with the ultimate answer to life, the universe and everything, 42. The correct answer? is 16. You won. Marlon, you have won the tie break round and the elimination round. I don't feel like a winner. <laughs> Ladies, if you'd care to join us in the elimination room. So, Marlon and Eleanor May, in a tight tie break round, Marlon just scraped through Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Bernard. Stuart and Nicola, unfortunately, I have to ask you to leave the mansion and the competition immediately. We're here for a good time, not a long time, but it's been a lot of fun, so... At least we have a new friend out of it. That's exactly right. Yep. OK. week on Beauty and the Geek. Oh! The beauties face their biggest fears. Witchetty grubs. Giant burrowing roaches. Oh! The geeks mix it up at the pool bar. And stand by for some true confessions. It'd be really nice if I could get to know you a little bit better. Maybe I have a small crush on her. It's a bit of a love triangle. I'm not really sure what I do from here.